suspects are being one case involves the DC FBI is now offering a hundred thousand dollars to see for the police are releasing Welcome to Misty Mysteries, a true crime podcast where once a week I bring you a mysterious true crime case. This week I'll be covering the case of Alonzo Brooks. Have you heard of Anchor? Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. When I started Misty Mysteries, I didn't know where to go, and Anchor helped me get Misty Mysteries started without charging me an arm and a leg. Anchor is really my suggestion for anyone looking to start a podcast. It has tools that allow you to record and edit in app or on the website. Anchor distributes your podcast on all the listening places such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Good Pods, and all your favorite listening places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place and best of all it's totally free on anchor fm and on the anchor app alonzo brooks was born may 21st 1980 to billy brooks senior and maria ramirez alonzo was one of five children to maria he was very close to his mother and he was the baby of the family He went by the nicknames Lonzo and Zoe. Growing up, Alonzo was very into sports. He did karate, played football, basketball, and as a kid, he played outside with his best friend, Rodney English, where they played a lot of games, including King of the Hill. Mostly, his family described Alonzo as kind, loving, sweet, fun, and very easy to get along with. His friends would also describe him as someone who you could really play sports with and then you could sit down and have an easy conversation with. His sister would say he was a neat freak. He always had to have his clothes uh, clean and pressed. Alonzo had a certain style for his clean and pressed clothes. He always wore red because it was his favorite color including a red flannel he always wore, a beanie that went right above his eyes, and boots with socks folded a certain way. Alonzo grew up in Topeka, Topeka, Kansas, but moved to Gardner, Kansas with his mom in his late teens, early 20s. In Gardner, Kansas, Alonzo worked uh, at Countryside Maintenance as a custodian. He also had a group of friends he would hang out with and sometimes go to parties with. On April 3rd, 2004, Alonzo and his friends Justin Sprague, Daniel Foon, and Tyler Brothard went to a party to celebrate another friend leaving for the service. So I'd like to note that Alonzo wasn't a party type. His friends said that he didn't really go to parties very often, but he was going to celebrate his friend leaving for the service. Alonzo wore blue jeans, a t-shirt, a sweater, and his beanie that he always wore right above his eyes, and his boots. Right before leaving with everyone, they had to wait a little bit because Alonzo had to fix his socks. Alonzo had to wear two pairs of socks on his foot so that he could roll them down and tie his shoe tighter because a week before the party, he had hurt his ankle playing basketball. Alonzo... Uh, pulled Justin aside and asked Justin if he had anybody going in the car with him and Justin was like no so Alonzo asked hey can I hitch a ride with you so Alonzo and Justin and the whole crew headed out to a party in Lacing, Kansas about an hour away from Gardner his friends explained this town as a small country town with one gas station and no real stores the house party was described as being on a normal dirt driveway. Uh, there was fields and a creek on this property. It also, in the news, is called a farmhouse. When the group showed up to the party, there was people hanging out outside, and immediately Alonzo, Alonzo got out of the car and shouted, Who wants a beer? Justin said it was how Alonzo would initiate contact with everybody at the party. Daniel would remember about 50 to 60 people, but police reported 100 people around the age of 16 to 21. Six people from the party 
were from Alonzo's group of friends from Gardner, Kansas. The party was reported as being pretty normal. People playing drinking games, uh, drinking. They were dancing, playing card games. Till uh, this moment when Alonzo and Daniel, they were taking Jaeger shots. And Daniel turned around because he was distracted by someone and he went to talk to them. When he noticed someone tried to pick a fight with Alonzo. Daniel stepped in between them to stop the fight. Um, Alonzo was one of three people of color at the party. So he stepped in between and and Justin said about the party. He said there were there was some people at the party who, you know, had problems with people's skin color. And then Tyler quotes, Our group didn't really think much about race, so it never really got brought up. But Alonzo was probably the only black man there. Alonzo didn't let this bother him. Alonzo went right back to having fun at the party until Daniel and Tyler both heard about a different party and they left and they made sure to say their goodbyes and they remember saying goodbye to Alonzo and remember he was still just having a good time, hanging out with people, drinking, partying. Until around 11 o'clock when Justin and Alonzo they were just chain smoking cigarettes and they ran out of cigarettes. So Justin and another friend went to go get new packs of cigarettes. Justin took the wrong turn out the driveway and he got lost and he got stuck on a gravel road 30 minutes the wrong way. Justin was supposed to be Alonzo's ride home. He brought him there. He was supposed to take him home, but he was lost 30 minutes the other way. So he called the other friend, he called another friend at the party and said, hey, um, I'm not going to make it back. Can you please bring Alonzo home? And during that call, he could hear Alonzo making fun of him in the background saying, oh, Justin's lost. He's not coming back. So the one thing I found weird um, is that Justin wasn't stuck for a long time. Just one stick, and then him and the other friend, instead of deciding to go back to the party, even though he, he did call, make sure Adam was taking Alonzo home, but he he still you know was kind of Alonzo's ride. But instead, they went to a bank back in Gardner, and they went to a strip club where they were later kicked out that night. And I just found that kind of interesting, um, mostly because it, uh, it this. Case focuses a lot of on friend dynamic, and it's very interesting to see his dynamic with his friends. So, the next morning on April fourth, two thousand four, Maria woke up to a call from one of Alonzo's friends asking, "Hey, is Alonzo home?" And her response was, "Well, he should be home," and started to look for him. His bedroom had no evidence that he came home. His bed was made and clean. He she looked in the basement to see if he fell asleep down there and he, there was no sign of him in the basement she called him all around the house to see if he was there and there was no signs of alonzo coming home she asked the friend who called where was alonzo and he said well maybe he spent the night at somebody's house maria said no way no matter what alonzo always comes home no matter what happens Maria started to make calls to find Alonzo. All his friends woke up to calls about where Alonzo was, what happened to Alonzo, what happened at the party. When they spoke to Justin, and Justin told them Adam was supposed to take Alonzo home, but when they spoke to Adam, Adam said he didn't leave with Alonzo, he didn't say Alonzo, he figured Alonzo had left. When Maria called Rodney English, who is Alonzo's childhood best friend from Topeka, Kansas, and was like, is by chance Alonzo with you? Rodney immediately knew something was wrong, that Alonzo was missing, he didn't come home. That same day, Rodney drove up from Topeka to Gardner to meet up with Justin and their group in, in Gardner, so he didn't really know them. But he drove up to Lacing, where the party was, 
with Justin because Justin knew where the party was. When they got there, they split up to check the property and the wood lines to make sure Alonzo didn't pass out somewhere on the property near the creek. Brodney, when he split up, he checked across the street from the house. And that's where he found Alonzo's hat and boot. And a few more miles down, he found the other boot. He said it was as if someone just threw his boots and his hat out the window while driving and kind of just kept driving. In that moment that they found this, uh, someone driving a four-wheeler asked the guys to leave the area, that they weren't supposed to be there. And Rodney already had a funny feeling being in lacing. He knew he didn't really feel welcomed. And that's when Rodney knew something was wrong. And he told Justin, how do you take someone to a party and you don't come home with them? Especially how far from home it was. Rodney and Justin weren't the only people in Lacing that day. Maria also went there to talk to the sheriffs and report Alonzo missing. When they told her she needs to wait 48 hours, she told them, no, I'm letting you know he's missing because I know my son. You know, he comes home. Something is telling me something went wrong at that party. All of Alonzo's friends and family immediately knew something went wrong at that party. On April 4th, 2004, the same day Maria had just reported Alonzo missing and Rodney and Justin had went to the property to go check for Alonzo, the deputy also went to the house to check for Alonzo. At the house, he reported negative contact with Alonzo or anybody at the house. The house was vacant, meaning he did not see or talk to anybody when he was there checking out the house. That following Monday, the police conducted their first search of the property. They had they brought in cadaver dogs and had helicopters supplied by the highway patrol. On that same Monday, uh, Alonzo's brother and sister-in-law went to the sheriff's just to explain how important that Alonzo being missing is. The sheriff told them, hey, you know, he's a kid. He's going to show up anytime. He's probably out doing what kids do, walking around. That's when his sister-in-law responded, how many people do you know walk around with no shoes on? Plus, it had been raining and he had an injured ankle, which is why he had double socked before the party. He was limping, and he wouldn't have gotten very far. That Monday, when the sheriffs conducted a search for, the, for Alonzo, they found nothing with the cadaver dogs and the highway patrol helicopters. This was the same day that his brother and sister-in-law went to go talk to the sheriffs. The Wednesday, April 7th, 2004, Alonzo's missing persons case was turned over to the turned over to the KBI Kansas Bureau of Investigation. When it was turned over, the sheriff's office then became an assisting agency. The KBI sent out an evidence recovery team to the location, like the house. They did an extensive search of the house and the creek. Nothing was found from either Monday search or Wednesday search. On April 10th, 2004, that Saturday, the FBI joined the investigation. And on April 12th, 2004, more searches were conducted. A rescue and search team were sent out to look for Alonzo. This time, an underwater dive team was also brought in to search the creek. Bill Feller from Lee Summit Underwater Rescue and Recovery said, When we came here, the water was three feet high or three feet deep in the deepest part. They had six people, three on each side, to search the water with, and the water was low enough that they could shuffle their feet to see the bottom. But nothing indicated there was a body in there. They informed the sheriffs what they found, which was nothing, and they let him know if they wanted them to come back, 
to just let them know and they were never invited back so on the dive team's side they had closed this case so in the week that alonzo had been missing they conducted three searches by the sheriffs the kbi and then fbi one search from his friends and then now they have three agencies on the case still with no signs of alonzo and at this point his family felt lost the sheriffs um kept telling the family he was drunk he decided to walk home but friends and family just didn't believe that they they don't see the logic in it and that would be you know one long walk to be gone for a week especially if they couldn't find him with any of the searches Alonzo's family being worried nothing coming of the searches they kept, they would call the sheriff every day and it got to the point where the sheriff had to tell them you need to stop calling we will call you when we find something at this point the police were trying to locate and question everybody that was at the party figure out who was there what happened uh the vibes of the party if anything happened at all his friends justin daniel tyler they all took polygraph tests and were in questions intense to, intensively they were looked into the family was also told not to go to the property to hold off with their own search teams as they wanted to bring in their own search teams and investigate on their own it wasn't until a month later may 1st when the family heard back uh the the police didn't really have anything as of for finding alonzo with all the searches or finding him through the questioning and on may 1st 2004 the police cleared the family that they could go and send their own search party. Alonzo's brother said that they didn't really know what they were looking for in this search, but they wanted anything that would show what happened or something to represent Alonzo. On May 1st, his brother Billy, Uncle Edward Ramirez, and other volunteers set out to help the family and find Alonzo. Everyone split up to the search, including a volunteer named Karen Turner. She went to look at a white shed that hadn't been searched before, who she said needed to be searched. On her way to the shed, she was looking through bushes when she looked up and said, Oh crap, there he is, there's Zoe. Alonzo was in a creek on top of a pile of branches and mud. She radioed and said, We've got him. We've got Zoe. That's when his uncle, Edward Ramirez, radioed Billy. We found him. Just follow the creek. Billy ran through mud to find Billy, to find Alonzo and his uncle, Edward. Edward stopped him and told him don't touch him don't go over there after an hour and a half of searching alonzo's family and volunteers found him in the creek his uncle described finding him as saying you know you see him laying there and you think back to all the times that you've seen him walking around having fun and you see this young man just laying there his life just gone. Luckily, his sister didn't come search because I don't think my sister could have me, could have took that day. His brother Billy recalled just how quickly KBI, FBI, and helicopters were there. He described it as crazy. With KBI, FBI, and the helicopters on scene, Alonzo's body was found in a state of decomposition. He was found fully clothed besides his shoes and hat that were found previously, and he was found with personal items, including a ring and his wallet. Dr. Eric M Mitchell was a 
forensic pathologist who was responsible for the examination and autopsy of Alonzo. He was found with no penetrating injuries, no gunshot wounds, no blunt force trauma, and no bone fractures. He could not rule out drowning or or strangulation due to stated decay of the body. The The soft tissue on the neck were almost gone due to animal and insects. Dr. Eric Mitchell was unable to find the cause of death. He ruled cause of death and manner of death as unknown. I would like to add that Dr. Eric Mitchell was later made to step down from his position due to improper storage of bodies and skeletons and removing organs without family's knowledge. For this reason, his findings have been questioned by police and other sources. Not believed that Alonzo's body was in the water the whole time. The divers said if he was there, they would have found him. And police believe he floated into the water when it was higher. His family does not believe he was in the water the whole time. His brother even asked, where was he from April 4th till May 1st when we found him? Billy said his brother didn't even look dead. His body had no sign of bloat or anything. And his mother argues if he was in the water, why was his wallet and personal belongings perfectly fine? Like they weren't in the water for a month. His mother still even has them and shows them, and they do look. You can see in the Unsolved Mysteries Netflix series, you can see that they do look like nothing ever happened to them. The family believes that Alonzo was placed after the police had stopped their searches with no cause of death. And not a whole lot of evidence to go on. In March 2009, the KIB released a statement about Alonzo's case, stating that they had no evidence or information during the investigation into his death that deducted he was a victim of a crime. For this reason, they closed the case. This has been the Netflix series I previously brought up, Unsolved Mysteries, picked up the case and during recording of the episode the fbi reopened alonzo brooks case the fbi has not released why it was reopened but people believe the show's filming and investigating is what sparked the fbi's new interest in the case july of the july 21st of 2020 so 17 years later only three weeks after the episode of Unsolved Mysteries had come out, Alonzo's, Alonzo Brooks' body was exhumed and transported to Dover Air Force Base for examination by the Armed Forces Medical Examiner. Details about the examination are being held private to protect the case, but a statement was released saying... Brooks' body has a pattern of decomposition inconsistent with a normal decomposition. This was a new examination by a team of the world's best forensic pathologists and experts establishing it was no accident Alonzo Brooks was killed, according to the acting U.S. attorney Dustin Sinkard. It's believed tips that came up after the show are what led to the new examination. On April 5th, 2021, nine months after his body had been exhumed, his case had been declared a homicide. The FBI is offering $100,000 to those with information that would lead to an arrest and conviction for the person responsible to Alonzo Brooks' death. We may never know exactly what happened to Alonzo. What we do know is that Alonzo didn't deserve to die. His family didn't deserve to hurt the way they hurt. If you or anyone you know has tips that may bring 
Alonzo Justice, you can go to tips.fbi.gov or you can call Tips Hotline at 816-747-TIPS and TIPS is 8477. You can also call FBI Kansas office at 816-512-8200.